If love is crazy, then maybe, baby, I'm insane for you. I first heard your name in March this year. And we played Slip on the radio. And so I'm so excited to like follow that up before the end of the same year where we first heard you on the radio. Uh, That's to have crazy. You as our featured artist on the Regional Artist Spotlight. Anise, welcome to Virgin Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. Um, so where are you right now uh, in the world? Virginia, Northern Virginia. So like not too far from, from uh, D.C. Okay, well, let's get your, your story because you're Palestinian Lebanese. Mm-hmm. And you've lived in the USA all your life? Yes. Always in Virginia? Yeah, born and raised. <laughs> born and raised. <laughs> Do you still feel the connection to the Middle East? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, where does that come from? Is that a family thing? You know, my, my, my parents really raised us that way. Yeah? They raised us to feel very connected to our roots, even though, so, a little backstory, on my dad's side, the Lebanese side, we've been here for four generations. Wow. Um, on my mom's side, we've, you know, she's she's the first one here so you know on each side of my family there's a different story but the common bond i think that maybe bonded my parents and that they raised their kids on was um being connected to their roots and and knowing where they come from and so they did that in the, in, in in the biggest ways and in the smallest ways in our house whether it was the way the house was decorated the type of instruments we play the type of music they they uh, brought us up on the sort of people they brought us around um you know my dad was heavily involved uh in in the civil rights organization for arab americans so we we really didn't have a choice as <laughs> as uh, kids growing up but you're a lawyer and so as soon as i heard this i was like i because i didn't know that right from when we first started playing your music i was like oh is that the arab parents <laughs> <laughs> you know the funny the, the funny thing is it's not it's really not crazy but like <laughs> no no like I know how it goes. I know the traditional trope of like, you got to be lawyer, doctor, engineer. Mm -hmm. And like with my parents, it wasn't like that. I think it was like a very, it's ironic because my dad is also a lawyer. Ah, and so, okay. And, and so you would think even more so, oh yeah, this makes even more sense, but that wasn't it. I think I just, as a, um, as a young adult didn't have the, um, didn't have the courage i would say to 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 see the the, the full scope of the options that okay. were in front of me and so i picked from what i believed would be acceptable and that was just me um imputing what is acceptable onto myself ironically enough the whole time i think i could have told my parents fresh out of high school hey i'm making music and they probably would have supported me but did you <laughs> did you want to make music fresh out of high school was that always in the back of your mind, like secretly at the time, probably? Yeah, I, I think I think it was. But like you said, in the back of my mind, in my subconscious, in my heart, um, in my brain, I think the way that our formal education system works, you're, that's just not an option. You know, nobody is giving you courses on that. That's not an option they speak about when you're taking the SATs, when you're doing college prep. It's just, you know, math, science, you know, English, history. These are the these are the options. And so I think in my heart, I always did want to make music, but it took, it took me, uh, it took me getting to a point in my life where I felt so gravely unfulfilled with what I was doing for my heart to basically scream at my brain and be like, yo, you got to do something you love. <laughs> but you finished college. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I finished college, finished law school. You graduated, uh, you finished did, law school. And so what was the flick then? How, how did that happen? Um, you know, so the first year of law school, I, you know, got through it, didn't like it, but it was like, okay, it's the first year. Second year of law school, I was like, all right, I really don't like this, but I'll just get done with it. And then third year of law school, I'll be honest with you, I got to a point where I was, I was depressed. Uh -huh. I was, it, it had gotten to a point where I was so, I had, I had, I have strayed so far from what my heart was calling me to do. And I think when you, when you, when you get far enough from where your heart is, it's a very dark place to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think once I got to that point, it was a, a existential reckoning for me of like, do you want to have a sad life or do you want to have a happy life? Really? And, it, and, the, choice, and the choice was very simple. First step into making music. Uh, what was it for you then when you decided, yeah, I'm going to make the leap. I'm just going to make the switch. <laughs> was it a switch or uh, was it a gradual process? 
very gradual. Yeah, the sure. first step was actually <laughs> <laughs> the first step was vlogging, believe yeah. it or not. Because so so catch this. So at the time I was engaged, I'm now married. But at hey, the time congrats. I was engaged, thank you. Thank same you, girl. Thank you. Uh, yeah, same girl. <laughs> <laughs> thank God, same girl. Um, but at the time I was engaged, and you know, so her parents thought, you know, he's going to be a lawyer. My parents thought he's going to be a lawyer. Uh, my whole community was, you know, within and at least, even though I wasn't forced to be a lawyer mm -hmm. by my Arab heritage, I will say Arabs are so proud, and they're so proud of their their children that when I was in law school, it's all my family talked about, right? You know, my mom would just tell everybody, the grocery store clerk, my dad would tell people in his office, clients, you know, my tata, every time I would see her, all I would hear from her, hammy, hammy, hammy. She really was excited, like, you're going to be a lawyer, right? And so when I decided I, I'm not going to be a lawyer, I had to find a way to like <laughs> almost pitch it to people, you know? <laughs> I was like, how do I, how, how, like lawyer to rapper slash singer slash artist was way too way too much of a <laughs> of a jump so so i was terrified honestly i was very terrified i was like how do i because i didn't know to be honest with you i didn't know i wanted to do music quite yet okay i just knew i want to do something creative i want to be in the creative fields um in my heart i knew i wanted to do music but the frontal cortex of my brain hadn't quite Got the confidence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is this going to work for me, Doug? Yeah. I so I pitched to them, like, I'm going to do video. I'm going to do YouTube. You know, you, I threw general terms, video, YouTube, <laughs> vlogging, the type of things that they wouldn't understand. But, like, people understand that you can make money with videos. So it just seemed like, you know, this is going to be something that will be a more gradual step for them and for me. And so, yeah, so it started off vlogging. <laughs> This is really important what you're saying right now because a lot of people, everyone can relate to exactly what you're saying, but no one hears this story, this side of the story of what's going through your mind as you're thinking, what's the, what's my thing? It's so a important. lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna be the one for me, I'm gonna need you to keep it true. And if I'm gonna be the one for you, then you must let me come through so we can do what lovers do on the move, me and you, just the two of us. Baby, make your move because. Um, you're doing the interview from your car. You're in your car right now. Uh, lots of yes. people will recognize your car, of course. Um, some yes, people might be going, oh, he's just on a, he's running errands right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you explain for those who don't know why you're in your car right now? Any? Yeah, absolutely. So this, you are in the studio. <laughs> you are in my spaceship. You are in my my therapy room. You are in my in my safe space. You're in my sanctum. This is this car is so much more than a car. So like, um, you know, I'll be honest. It's a Ford Focus 2010. Um, I'll show you right here. We got crank, you know, crank <laughs> windows. There's nothing special about this car on a uh, spec on like a specs level, you know, basic. No Bluetooth, none of it. Um, I bought it when I was, I think, 18. It was my first like major purchase. I paid it off delivering pizzas at Domino's. Um, and backstory on me, I commuted all four years to college really? and commuted all three, all three years to law school. Yeah. And, and so I spent a lot of time in this car, mm -hmm. right? And I delivered 10 years on and off pizza in this car, right? So really, I became the man that I am today in, in this, this car. car. I learned everything I need to know. Like delivering pizzas, I learned more doing that than I did in law school and college combined without a question. I learned perseverance. I learned finesse. I learned customer service. I learned integrity. I learned hustle. Like everything that makes me a promising and successful artist was learned in this car with a box of pizzas and shotgun. <laughs> and so, and so. <laughs> And, 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 you know, like, like, I, like I described earlier, you know, I did go through some dark times and some mental health struggles. And in those times, it was this car where I would come and I would take this aux cord yeah. and I would, I would, you know, play beats and freestyle. And I learned to freestyle when I was 15 and I haven't stopped since. Um, I've probably freestyled for dozens of thousands of hours in this car. So, so yeah, it's a it's a very special place. Uh, I I go live here in this car on Instagram and on TikTok almost every night. 
my fans have become familiar with it. And beyond that, you said you found me for my song Slip. Well, Slip was recorded 100% in this car. Um, I was going to so ask, it's, because when you, it's, it's, when you first search yeah. about audio... The, the first thing that comes up is don't bother spending money in your house trying to make that sound good because your car will probably already sound good. That's like the first thing that comes up, right? You know, but the funny thing is I was told the opposite. Everybody was like, dude, there's going to be glass. <laughs> like the, the sound is going to bounce. You're going to need foam paneling. So I stressed out. I used to, what I used to do, I used to take foam, like foam insulation and tape and just stick up every part of the car. Really? One time a cop saw me in the parking lot and thought there must be some shady things going on in this car. <laughs> He knocked on the window, I opened the door. I'm like, hey, what's going on, officer? I'm just recording my mixtape. <laughs> and so. <laughs> How did that go down? Just now, just. He didn't ask for my for my SoundCloud link, which was a little yeah. hurtful. But, you know. <laughs> when did the first video in the car come out? Um, The moment I started. So probably okay. 20, late 2018, early 2019. Okay. And, and you can see I just dropped my song Drunk on Myself in July. And this past July, and my first song on my Instagram is the first iteration of that song in this yeah. car, like three years ago. This was the car that um, you were on Instagram Live in earlier this year, and Justin Bieber joined the IG Live. Um, yes, are we, crazy. Are we over that yet? Have we realized that that's a normal thing that happened to you, Justin yeah, Bieber, just know, popping in? I, don't, I think that uh, that'll be something I'm I'm processing over time, but. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I think it was so poetic and so beautiful, right? Because when you think about that Instagram live session, and I've been I've been asked about it a lot. Yeah, so I've had a lot of time to think about it, right? And I was sitting right here, and right here in Shotgun was my best friend, Yusuf. And actually, it was Yusuf's birthday yesterday, and so we were just celebrating him, so I had even more time to think about this. Um, we were getting chicken tenders, right? We got chicken tenders from Wingstop. We sat down. We're eating and we're debating about honey mustards, right? We're like, which one's the best honey mustard? So I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's go on live. Casual night. I go on yeah. live with my fans every night. They hear me talk about random stuff like honey mustard. Who cares? <laughs> Click, right? <laughs> and so we're going on live. And yeah, next thing you know, we're on live with Justin. Yo, can Fuck. you do it one more time, bro? We got 60,000 people in here. They need yeah, to bro, this song, I mean, bro. I mean, what? I mean, I'm not going to turn down the opportunity. They Let me hear it. Let's go. I see what you do when you're not thinking I'd be a damn fool if I let you slip. Yeah. Slip out my grip and I'm never trying to control you. But I can't take that risk, not with this. Once in a lifetime, sports and a fine time. Life save a lifetime, right place and right time. And I'm unworthy of your dress, but I'm working under this pressure to keep you with forever because you're rock solid. I look, looking back on it, I'm so grateful I was in my car because. Um, he shared such an intimate moment with me and he brought me into his living room with his wife, which is so special when you think about it for someone to bring you into, into such a, such a intimate space of their own. And I don't think there's a better place that I could have reciprocated with him than my car. Um, <laughs> even more so than my home, even more so than my room. Like th if there is a place that is most special to me in terms of like, uh, you know, there's some places that are that are more important than my car, but like this is a very special place yeah. for me. And so I think it was special that he got to basically be in the car just like my fans are every night. And looking at your face, because you can still go back to your Instagram and watch that, the whole IG Live, you posted it. Um, looking at your face, I don't think you were really processing what was going on <laughs> at the time. No, no, <laughs> no, not what? at all. Bro, yes, all love, man. It's all love. What's good, dog? Yes. So you feel it? You, I can't tell if you like it or not. Do, do, I can't tell if you like it. You can't not feel that, bro. <laughs> it's literally bro. physically impossible. Bro, clearly we both got someone we love very deeply. Right? Bro, justice is all about that, man. Yes. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. I just Don't. wanted to, I just wanted, bro, I just wanted to share freaking your incredible music with everybody, man, because everybody should hear it. That's wild, man. It's That's wild, truth, man. Dude, That's this true. life is so crazy, man. This life is so crazy. You're right. So crazy, my boy. In certain moments in life, when you're blessed with an opportunity, I've come to learn that your instinct takes over. Mm -hmm. um, because... Sometimes you ask, you, you can, 
if you think things out ahead of time, you'll psych yourself out. Oh, if this happens, what will I do? You can almost walk yourself through scenarios that you shouldn't, mm. right? Um, and create negative, like almost prophecy in your head for like, if this happens, I'm going to fail, right? I would have never imagined this was going to happen, right? Mm. So I had no chance to even think about this, right? Which was beautiful because when it happened, it was just instinct. It was like, okay, this is a moment. And I think, to be honest with you, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man of belief. I'm a man of faith. Like, I think it was a God thing. Like, I think, you know, the, the connection in the conversation was very deep, very rich and very spiritual. And so, um, I don't think it was so much what was going on on my face or what was going on in my head. I think it was going on in my heart. Um, and I think there was a connection on that level of something deeper than just Instagram or music or, um, certain levels of celebrity i think it was more it was such a human thing it was so human so real and so interpersonal that it felt like i was talking to my brother you know Mm -hmm. well i don't want to talk about him too much you know we're here for you but (laughs) he's a great guy watching that and you are if if you haven't seen the instagram i please go and watch it but for me the, the highlight was you are there uh, making music and Justin Bieber is dancing in his pajamas. <laughs> How do you Crazy. concentrate under that moment? Like, so much happened in that one hour live you did that <laughs> from the wing stop you know, the fun, to Justin Bieber the funny dancing. Thing is, his dancing, his energy, his support is what made it possible for me <laughs> to do what I was doing because at the end of the day, human beings, um, we're all, how do I put this? We're all the same, yeah. right? We're all the same. Now, when someone's of a certain level of celebrity, it is it can be quite intimidating to speak with them, to be around them. But the thing that was so beautiful about that live, and like you said, he was dancing, he was vibing, he was singing along. He left me no option but to feel mm. hyped up and supported. You know what I'm saying? He set the tone from the very beginning of the call. Like, yo, I rock with your music and i'm here to gas you up how could i have like (laughs) felt anything but like you know fired up like you know uh, i know how it feels when my homies gas me up right like if i'm freestyling and one of my homies is in the back and they're just like you know they're feeling it like you 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 go to a different level yeah you when 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 you when you're when your people are are feeling what you're doing you start to feel yourself even more and that was the same and that's why i say it felt like i was talking to my brother i had that same feeling i did sitting around a bonfire when I first learned how to freestyle and you know some of my best friends would be sitting with me and you know they're just like they're just feeling that's <laughs> that's the energy that was in the room you know I can imagine like literally electricity going through that car with you and your buddy like it must have been oh, nuts. it must have been nuts. it was electric I've been, I've been <laughs> drunk on myself for a while now living a dream treating myself like thinking I was made to be man I've been drunk on myself for a while now I got everything I want not a single reason to find why I'm in love with me I search deep search deep and we talk about the music then um, it's why we're here um, rappers generally you know, your Instagram is an Easter rapper, but generally mm. rap is going more melodic, right? Where does mm. that inspiration come from for you? Because you're a very melodic guy. All the music is very mm. melodic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> when I first started out on Instagram, I didn't know what to do in terms of branding, right? So I okay. went with, okay, Anise the rapper, because I knew I rap. Yeah. I knew I, I, I knew like I can spit, I can freestyle, I'm different, right? And then over the past few years, um, having come to know myself better um, as an artist and as a human being, I've realized that I'm so much more than a rapper. I've realized, oh, I'm a singer. Oh, I'm an artist. Oh, I'm a poet. Oh, I'm a content creator. I'm an influencer. Oh, I'm a vlogger. Oh, I'm, 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 I have so many different things. There's no one box that sort of yeah. I have to um, stay in, which is what allows me, I think, when I create my art to incorporate so much melody is that I don't feel that, oh, the bounds of hip hop are the bounds of my music. And, and, and likewise, I don't feel that the bounds of pop or R&B or any genre can find me. So that's really so freeing because I can make a song that's a pop song but spit a verse Mm -hmm. and then and then make sure the chorus or make sure the bridge has like an r&b grit to it like um 
I don't believe in in um, boxes or labels. I believe that it's beautiful to be genreless. I think we're in the age of the genreless artist. Me too. And I'm I'm very grateful to be one of them and to sort of hopefully set the tone for this next generation coming up. You know, that that's learning themselves. <laughs> and so yeah, that's kind of it's kind of where that comes from. Let's talk about the song Slip. I see what you do when you're not thinking. I'd be a damn fool if I let you slip. Yeah, if I let you slip out my grip, and I'm never trying to control you, but I can't take that risk. Not with this once in a lifetime, sports and a prime time. I save a lifeline, right place and right time. And I'm unworthy of your treasure, but I'm working under this pressure to keep you with forever, because you're rock solid, definition of loyal. Yeah, it's a love song. You know, there's no hiding that. It's a love song. It's about my wife. It's a song I wrote about our love story um and it wrote itself in that sense i didn't have to like think what story do i want to tell <laughs> how am i gonna like you know what i'm saying like and i and don't get me wrong like when i write some songs i'm trying to come up with the story it's difficult but when it comes from your heart it's so easy this was the easiest song i ever wrote um so much so that i don't even remember writing it really you know like yeah it's not like my other songs where i can think oh man i remember when i wrote that verse i remember when i wrote that no it was just like boom just came out of me and so yeah i mean it's a story about um when you love someone enough you know that you're gonna do what it takes to keep them around um and there's a fine line between that and also giving someone the freedom to um to leave you if they want right wow. but at the end of the day like i don't believe in in being too passive in life i believe in 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 taking what you want going out there and and, and if you love something enough and if you care about something enough you got to go out there and let that be known and then yeah and then whatever happens it's fate but you know with my with my wife there was a little while there where you know i was courting her and she wasn't quite sure yet <laughs> this song obviously came out this year you're married now so do you recall on previous experiences and you just pick them up and you can just quickly jot down those those almost memories or feelings or oh yeah is that how it works those feelings never leave you you know i could i could write a song right now about a feeling i felt 10 years ago and still still feel it like as if it were today and uh but you know what they say about marriage is that you should always be dating your wife right yeah you should always be actively courting her never taking her for granted so i think that's that's the beauty of the song slip is that you know it's like i'd be a damn fool if i let you slip right so it's like not just in the sense of like oh like i i would have been a fool if i didn't get you to marry me i would be a fool if i didn't get you to stay with me yeah. even in this marriage you know and so because i think a lot of people take that for granted like oh like once you like as if marriage is a finish line or the end zone but no marriage is just like the 10 yard line you still gotta <laughs> keep, keep you know what i'm saying you still got to keep moving down the field and so um and 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 you see that in sports teams teams get up by a, by a touchdown or two and they lay off the gas i think in marriage you should always be on the gas you should always be um and i say this as but you know something that i i definitely need to work on but i know that it's true and I know that um, you should be courting you, that thrill of the chase should be there always. Wow. And that's kind of what this song is about. And it's expected that, that just disappears after three months and then yeah. even lower at 12 months. And then it's just expected. It's, this is quite deep stuff for you to say you can't remember writing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it, it's, there's a difference between when you're, writing from your brain and when you're writing from your heart yeah, of course when you write from your heart there's not as much like mental memory of it it's just i can feel the feeling of that song every time i hear it yeah you know i can i can feel the emotions that led me to write it every time i hear it also keep in mind i wrote that song three years ago yeah okay so there you go and so there's there's um there's almost like a uh uh a very big period in time between when when some of these songs i'm dropping right now were written and really? when they were released so yeah how, how do you decide then what to go into the archives and release <laughs> it's a challenge really? it's a challenge because yeah because sometimes you 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 got a song and you're like mm, that one will hit but then you think to yourself it's like i don't feel that song anymore i don't i don't uh like it might be a hit but like i'm not the same person i was when i wrote it and i don't you have to still feel the song okay you have to and I know a lot of artists feel this because they write songs years before they release them. Um, 
But for me, it's about what story do I want to tell? I think as an artist, it's all about storytelling. Everything we release is a part of our story. Slip is such an important part of my story. I couldn't not release it. Um, and I think when you look back on your archive, you might look at some things you wrote and be like, that's dope, but that's not part of my story. Maybe I'm insane for you, yeah. If love is crazy, then maybe, baby, I'm insane for you. Maybe I'm insane for you. Maybe I'm insane for you. Cause I pulled on those strings of my heart and they rang, and they rang, and they rang for you. But yeah, they only rang for you. Are you ready to get on the stage again? Are you doing more live yes. shows? Uh, what's yes. the score with that? Because Flash Entertainment, that's their big game. Us at Virgin Radio, we love nothing more than live music. Do you? Are you in the same oh. boat? I can, I'm I'm right on top of that boat. <laughs> I'm right on top of that boat. I, I, I'm at the helm of that boat. Welcome. Um, no, yeah, 100%. We're planning a spring 2022 tour. So for those in America on the East Coast, like Boston, Chicago, D.C., New York, New Jersey, Philly, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Cleveland, uh, we're hitting your cities. Uh, so, so yes, absolutely. We're planning to get out and um, and do like a whole live set down the East Coast. Eventually, we want to work our way to the Southeast, West Coast. But I will say uh, it would all be incomplete if we didn't do a global tour and stop by Dubai 100%. and the UAE. Like we're, 100%. We're, trying, we're, trying to take this, we're trying to take this international. We'll build this stage ready for you. You just tell us the day you're going to be here and it'll be it'll be set up ready. <laughs> Tickets will be sold. Hey, bet. I'm there. <laughs> uh, as long as you two are there, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you uh, think about going on this tour next year, you've kind of missed a section of your career mate in terms of there's been a mm. pandemic mm. <laughs> so the growth from obviously before lockdowns and stuff like that to where you're going to be touring next year is insane are you ready <laughs> yeah oh so I, I mean i don't know if, i don't know i don't know if i'm at a place where i'm beyond ready or if i could <laughs> never be ready all i know is that i i want it you know what i'm saying and yes the pandemic was awful and you yeah. know, it's been a it's been a a dark cloud over our head as a as a human race. But for artists, I will say you can't deny this. It's been an opportunity to grow, and it has been an opportunity for me, especially um, with like I said with TikTok. Yeah. My audience has ballooned from where it was to being hundreds of thousands of people stronger, hundreds of thousands of listeners deeper. And so when we when we hit you know stage now it's just gonna be it's gonna be the greatest joy what were the shows like before all of this happened 2019 you know to be honest yeah to be honest with you i hadn't done a show before the pandemic i was so green in my career that i had not done a live show yet so we're going zero to 100 real quick we did a couple we did we did a couple shows in between since like as the pandemic is you know Easy. creating opportunity yeah but we are essentially going zero to 100 yes <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, I cannot wait. I cannot, cannot wait. Anise, we are featuring you all this month. It's going to be a great November hearing your musical month, getting to know you. Mate, thank you for taking so long out of your morning to, to speak to me. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. I am so privileged to be here in the spotlight with you guys for the month of November. And I hope that this month we can uh, bring some love to people's yeah. hearts with the music. Let's connect. Anise on Virgin Radio, bro. Thank you so much. I see. What you do when you're not thinking I'd be A damn fool if I let you slip, yeah Slip out my grip and I'm never trying to control you But I can't take that risk, not with this, no, yeah No, I can't take that risk, not when I see What you do when you're not thinking I'd be A damn fool, cause